Hello. This is my opinion on what I think Brighter Shores should be as a game. Brighter Shores. In order for it to be a successful MMO. So, fair warning, or not warning, but like, caveat. I believe that a lot of the game was leaked already, but I have not looked at any of it because I don't want to... I don't want to to uh, give a benefit to people breaking, you know, NDAs and stuff because that's that's bad. So I did I did not look at any of the leaks. But here's what I think that Brighter Shores needs to be if it wants to, you know, compete in the modern MMO scene. I think that it is very obvious that it's targeting the RuneScape audience. Why? Because it's made by the Gower brothers, who literally were the grandfathers of RuneScape, creators of the game. And if you look at their trailers, the game looks pretty simple. Like, it, it doesn't look like there's anything complicated. Like, there's not, like, an ability bar on the screen. There's not, you know, these... All, all of these, like, you know, your characters are doing these, like, backflips and, in, you know crazy <laughs> combo wombo combos and, and all that so it looks relatively simple and runescape you know at its core is a pretty simple game especially the old versions of runescape and old school runescape so what is brighter shores going to do it's either going to be a completely new twist on the game or it's going to try and be like a a, a re-release of RuneScape, I guess. You know, like RuneScape 2.0. Or both. Uh, I, you know, honestly, ideally, it should be both. But anyways, what I think RuneScape... Not RuneScape. What I think Brighter Shores needs to be... Or needs to do is... It needs to capture the magic of playing RuneScape again. So what, what, what does this mean? Why was RuneScape, from its inception, all the way, you know, back in the early 2000s and, and or even earlier if you played, like, Devious Mud or something, uh, why was it so cool? It had a thrilling sense of adventure. You know, what, what, what gives you a sense of adventure? You have a big open world... So you, you can just do whatever you want. You can, you can stay in the, you know, main area and, like, do all the quests and side quests. Or you can just, like, randomly roam around the world. Hopefully you don't die to a freaking bear or something. That's, uh, that is, I think, a big element of why RuneScape was successful. It has a huge progression system. Like, RuneScape... From the beginning, if if you just log in and you're like, you know, level one in all your stats and you and you just like look around and you see a dude, you're, you're like le you're combat level three and you see a dude that's combat level like 107, you're like, God dang, this guy freaking grinded. This man sunk thousands of hours into this game and he is freaking beating up these bears in one shot. <laughs> And that was freaking cool. So RuneScape had... I think the huge progression system was also a very big draw to why it was... It, it, it seemed like a very rewarding thing to pour your time into. Because you know that you, you wouldn't play the game for like 10 hours and then be done with it. Like other games may be like... Honestly, I think, I think the microtransactions also play a big part of it. Because... Once you introduce microtransactions into your progression into your progression system, then that also kind of kills the magic of the progression system. So, I I assuredly believe that Brighter Shores will not have will not have like microtransactions that will impact your progression. I don't know. Maybe it will have some cosmetic things. I have no clue. But it very likely, I will say, it will not have like progression impacting prog uh, microtransactions like Treasure Hunter in RuneScape Three. And I think the 
last thing that RuneScape, you know, really capitalized on in the beginning was having a near limitless things to do. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but the, the reason why I'm exaggerating is because when you started playing this game, it really did feel like that. It felt like there were so many things to do. You didn't have to do the same thing over and over again. Like, even within skilling, on, you know, there was like 20 different things that you could skill and like look at the, ta look at the tree, you know, the level up tree and see all the things you unlock that will help you know, other things that you might want to do. You can try and be a merchant and freaking sit, sit at the Grand Exchange. Or even earlier, you sit at, sit at uh, West Bank Varrock and try to, try to make money. Because, you know, having, having a ton of money was also cool because you can buy really expensive stuff. And a lot, not a lot of people had expensive stuff in the game. And, or you could, you know, do PvP and go in the wilderness and call people noobs and, you know, say GG easy as they died. It really did feel like there, there were just a million things you could do in the game. And I think it's really, really hard to actually capture this. I think a lot of games have tried. Okay, I, I will say this. I, I, I'm not like a, I have not played many other MMOs, so I actually am not a very good... I'm not very knowledgeable on this. But I have a feeling that not a lot of games have really, um, really captured this, this sentiment. And you guys can let me know in the comments. Let me know if other games have been able to do this. Uh, there were people who ran businesses with player employees, like coal mines. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were people that had, like, freaking cartels and stuff. Yeah, that was really cool. And and why 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 was that like that? It was because the game had so many options. It had so many uh it had so many things to do that people people actually thought that it was it was I mean it was. It was profitable to run runes for people because of how easy it was for them to do and they would make so much money and money had had so much value in the game. Yeah, like 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 running runes for people, even though you you were essentially like a like a freaking like a like a blue collar worker. Like the the fact the fact that that gold had so much value in RuneScape, it really gave purpose to people like running runes. I think they're obviously going for the RuneScape audience, and if if they hit these metrics, I think the game will be successful. Especially because I feel like all of us, we, we have just, we, we trust them, right? We trust the Gowers. We trust the Gowers to make a RuneScape experience because they made the original RuneScape experience. A everyone always says, like, oh, RuneScape, RuneScape fell off after, like, 2012. Guess, guess when the Gowers left Jagex? Like, the early 2010s. So, you know, I, I have a lot of expectations for the game, but if, any, if anyone can hit these expectations, I would believe it's these guys. So, yeah, that's all I have for Spider Shores. I'm going to be streaming the frick out of it starting Wednesday. So uh, tune in to my Twitch if you guys want to hang out. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to experience as much of the game as possible so i can give like my honest review my honest like thorough review of the game to see if it's worth playing and if it has done what it set out to do by being literally you know the brighter shores on the other side